Today we end the debate. The good old API routes against the newcomer. Server actions. Who will win this battle and when should you use what? This video gives you a detailed but quick comparison. And let me tell you, the winner of today's comparison might be not what you initially thought. So hey, my name is Toby and let's go through this together. So today we will cover the differences, the syntax, the DX, which stands for developer experience. So how pleasant is something for developers? Then when to use what, where I have a big table set it up where we just compare when to use actually which method. And in the end, of course, we will find a winner. But of course you need to understand what I'm talking about today. So here is a simple Venn diagram, API rods and server actions. They both run on the server and they both use HTTP. Yes, server actions are actually HTTP endpoints under the hood. The main difference now is that API routes are more HTTP based, like you have a request, you have a response and you call it over a API endpoint actually. And on the server action side, you just call a function. And that's the general difference. So now we need to understand the syntax. And for that, we look into code. Here we can see a simple example of API routes. We have a get API route to get some data where we just call our database. And then we have a post route for creating something. In this example, a new to do. So this is the simple structure of API endpoints. We specify the HTTP method, then we just get a request. And with the JSON method, we can then extract the data out of that. And in the end, we return a response. If we now want to call such an API endpoint, we for example, have a method like handle create to do. So then we just need to call that, specify the method that we have to just specified here and in the body we need to specify what to hand over to the API endpoint and convert this to JSON. Okay cool but how would this look if we use server actions? Pretty simple we just as I already said call a function so for example create to do. We import that and we just pass up the to do and that's all. And as you already see, it's way shorter. And if we take a look into this create to do function, we see this is in a file called actions.ts. It does not have to have this name actions.ts. It can have every name. But what you need to be aware of is that on the top, you write use server. This doesn't really mean it is now on the server because if we have a simple component like this page TSX here, then this is also on the server because that's the default. I don't need to write use server here. It actually would be a mistake. I can just write nothing and it is on the server. But if we want to specify server actions, we need to actually write use server on the top. So every function in this file gets converted into a server action. So that was already the syntax. But what about the developer experience? As you might already have noticed, server actions are simpler. You have no HTTP overhead. You don't have a response or you don't have a request. You don't need to specify a HTTP method at all. So you're just calling this function and Next.js under the hood is doing all the magic for you. So where API endpoints feel like an actual real backend, server actions kind of bridge the gap. But the biggest thing here, the biggest thing out of this perspective of developer experience is that we have type safety here. Type safety means just that I have types because if I fetch a to do from my slash API slash to do's, I get type any because I have no idea what my backend is going to serve me. So the thing is, I'm not only knowing what's coming back, but I also have no idea what the API endpoint wants because with server actions, it's just functions. So when I hover this, I see, oh, okay, this needs something of type string. So I need to pass a string. And this makes working with server actions way, way, way more pleasant in terms of developer experience. And there we go now moving through this video. And the next point is the big table I matched in the beginning. It's about when to use what. So there we go. This is the table I already showed in the beginning. And here we have API routes and server actions and when to actually use what. So the first thing is cut. What is cut? With cut, I mean crud, but without the R. Because if we remember, crud means create, read, update, delete. But here's the thing now. Don't use server actions for read because server actions are actually designed for mutations. You don't need to call a server action, which is an API endpoint, because then you're calling an API endpoint, which then calls your database. So you have one more trip and you don't want that. So don't do it. But generally said, when it comes to crud or better said cut, then we have mutations like create, update and delete. These are mutations. And if you have mutations, use server actions. That's what they are best at. And to be honest, mutations are like 99% of the things that are happening in your application. So if you have them, 
use server actions. Next point is user drift AI. Because AI is somehow streaming data, right? If you put something in an input field of an AI, you don't get one big block, you get a stream response. This is not possible with server actions. That's why you should use API routes for that. And the next thing is webhooks. For webhooks, you also should use an API route because with a server action, you cannot really call it. Like, okay, I said that server actions are somehow post endpoints, right? But they somehow look something like that. And they can also regenerate themselves. So just use an API route if you have webhooks. So if you want to call something from out of your application, for example, from your mobile app, Let's say you have a mobile app and you want to use the same logic, then you somehow need to call your web app. And this is only possible with API endpoints. And the next thing where you should use server actions is form submissions. Form submissions in general, because that's most of the time mutations and the actual form tag just has an action attribute where you can pass a server actions and then you get the form data in the action and then you can get this out of the form data and cool, you're good to go. So form submissions, server actions are great. Next thing is custom headers or course management. So now it gets a little bit more complex, but if you actually want to use these HTTP protocol things, this is not really possible in server actions, but it is in API routes, so use them. Okay, we are nearly at the end of this when to use what table. And the next thing is when you build a damn API. Of course, when you want to build an API, use API routes. That's not where server actions are good at. And the last thing is all the other operations. Like there might be other use cases, just use server actions. But as I already mentioned, don't use them for fetching data. And there we go. This was when to use what. So now who is the winner of today's video? Of course, this is based on what you need. If you want to handle webhooks, choose an API route. If you want to do CRUD or CAD, then choose server actions. But from my perspective, I would say use server actions if possible and API endpoints when needed. I think that's the best solution and that's what Next.js wants you to do. That might be surprising because most of the projects out there, they don't use server actions because server actions are relatively new. And that's already it. Here you can find my last video about promise.all and how it can make your fetch request two times, three times or even more faster. Thank you for watching and have a great day.